All right, hello everyone. We're going to focus on uh, the breaker room one cycle. I'm going to go in and go with the tutorial on the breaker room one cycle on the way that I learned it. Um, we'll jump right into it. Yeah, I'll explain some of the ways I've figured out how to make it like possible for mini placement. You know, and maybe how you can deal with double cackles and such and stuff like that, reading the room. It's important to note as you get used to it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you want to like... Originally when the boo spawns, there will spawn different ways. Because like if the boo is on the left side of any part of a room, it will spawn from like the force momentum of the boo spawning. It will force itself just to the right of the middle of the room because it's supposed to spawn in the middle of the room, generally. But it always, from the force of where it's going or whatever is blocking it, save that we just blocking it, sometimes it just stays there that it's occasionally happened to people. But normally if he's like here, it'll spawn more right and if it's Right, it'll spawn more left, for example. That's one thing that can happen. But anyway, what we're trying to do is we are leading the boo to the left side, and I just lead him all the way to the wall. And I don't do the pullback strat, like, to the back middle of the room. If you're comfortable with that, that's fine. But what I do here is I just pull the boo back in, like, a slow pump formation, which is kind of like 12, 13 HP, sometimes more at the very end depending on what happens with your angle and you kind of want to pull in the opposite direction of which the ghost is facing and do it you can do it without the c-stick to get comfortable with it like if you're not comfortable with it where is this boo? so we're like leading him to the left If you're not comfortable with this C-Stick, you can just sit here and do it without it. I'm actually probably worse with it now because I'm so comfortable with it, but it doesn't get as much off originally. It may do it with, and I'm going to try to stay on, the, I'm going to try to stay on the hand cam, I'm going to try. No promises. Anyway, I wouldn't think, I mean, if you're really uncomfortable with C-Stick, it's fine, but what I do is just literally hold it down, so it's not any complex of any insanity like that. I'm not doing any type of complex or anything like that. I'm just holding it in the down position the whole time while I'm doing this instead. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get these because we're not doing very well at the moment, but... Basically, the idea of what, how to pull a boo back, and not only that, but how to pull a boo back in the room, because it's the same type of idea. The strat, the strat that I do here even taught me to pull boos back into the middle of the room, even though I still choose not to do it here. It's kind of like a shorter pumping motion. But anyway, you want, there's like a little circle of like area where a boo is if you like pull too far out of that circular range around the boo there's like a, a pocket there's a good name for it there's a pocket that the boo is kind of in with you in the vacuum as you're sucking them up and pumping the vacuum as you're sitting there doing the strat if you pull around that like pocket and don't pull through it, like pull so far that you like a break the pocket circle, then you won't double cackle. If you know what I'm saying. And also if you're pulling in right directions and doing that type of thing, but if you, the pocket circle really helps with that. You can use pocket circle ideas. I'm actually going to try to actually get this. 
No, it's still not getting yet. But when you are pulling back in the opposite direction of the way the ghost, um, the way the ghost is facing, but the ghost always points one direction and then changes another direction afterwards after he starts moving. So it's like when you pump, he looks one direction, and then when he starts to get ready to move, he looks a different direction. So you get like this whipping motion with the controller stick where you're pulling, like if he was facing straight left, you'd be pulling right, and then most of the time he decides to go like down. So you go like right and then up. So you're like pulling up and right. And that also keeps you within that pocket circle at the same time. You can kind of, if you keep the pocket circle idea in mind, you can actually like pull to the side like I'm doing now. Like see, I'm just like pulling back and forth. Did that one too long there? We we'll waited too long. Or got a little bit far away. A bunch of stuff happened. You get too far away from the pocket, and it's easier to pull out of it. You know, so you want to be close to the boo. So let's see if we can actually get it for the door. That would help, right? Get it there because one double cackle from the middle of the room from the right side. It's actually harder to get him from the right side because of what I said earlier because he spawns more left when he spawns from the right. Also, for people that don't know this, you can read this room too while we're talking about this as well and kind of teaching this at the same time. You can read this room from the right side, is what I'm saying. Obviously you can read this room, but you can like read, I think some people, or I heard this from somewhere, whether or not you can actually tell whether or not he's going to attack you or not. So some people will like jump back here, or I don't know if why Bluest does it, but some people do that for specific reasons, like they don't know whether or not the boo's going to do it. I always know whether or not the boo's going to be on an attack formation, or whether or not he's going to spawn down, or whether he's going to spawn up. It's a guaranteed thing. So if you're struggling with that and you're backing up and you're not sure, then don't be afraid to like take a few like minutes just to find out where the spawns are correct and understand the room so you know where the boo is spawning. Because once you know where the boo is spawning, you'll know whether or not he's going to spawn down. Because if he spawns, just like I said earlier, with the way the game works, when he spawns from the left side, he goes more right. He spawns from the right side, he goes more left. If he spawns more down, he's going to be more up in a down object that's on the ground. Like in Weston's room, when you have a shelf way up in the ceiling, and he spawns way down, that's not ironic. That happens because it does that every time. Unless you're in the way or something. It's the same idea here. So if, it's in, if he's in a top barrel, then he's going to spawn on the ground. And he will attack you if he spawns from a bottom barrel then he's going to spawn up unless like i said you get in the way it's best to not get in the way especially if you know he's going to be down don't get in the way and typically getting in the way most of the time either brings him up or maybe he'll get lucky and he stays over here i've had that happen once where he just stays on the right side after he spawns not sure how that happens exactly but it's pretty cool anyway the reason to tell this is you can see there's a circle Spawn point. That's a top barrel there. So if it's a top barrel, as I said, he's going to spawn on the bottom. And you want the action we finally got in the tutorial, by the way. E but anyway, the action of when you want Luigi to actually pull back the boo, you hear that there's like a cackle type noise that a boo makes, right? It's hard to explain. 
exactly what it sounds like, but there's a second, the second part of it, when you hear the cackle, the cold part, the second part of it, that's when you want Luigi's vacuum to actually put force onto the boo backwards. To get like the most, like, effective pull. Where are you, sir? That's also a top barrel, which means he's gonna be over here. So cackle, 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 cackle. The angles are terrible too, that's good. But I think you kind of I kind of told you there what kind of the idea. It's kinda of hard to talk and do this at the same time and stay on the um hand cam at the same time, but we're trying. We're working on this, I feel it. Feel it. Right. So anyway, it's, see, I, did, I haven't set an example of what it's like for him to be at a bottom barrel. But if he's at the bottom barrel... The... You saw the circular motion, or the circular, like, little pulsating thing that, like, pulses out as the boo spawns. It spawns directly out of a top barrel. If he's in a bottom barrel, it'll spawn like there'll be a little, that pulsating thing will be like in between the two barrels. And it can be hard for a beginner to read. I'm not saying this is easy to do, but once you notice it, you'll be able to tell what this is. And he's somewhere over here. He looks to only be in a top barrel for some reason. But we'll still do this just to show the examples of what it looks like since that way a fan cam in there. Yeah, you can mix it up if you're more comfortable with like doing the side thing that I did earlier where you can like pull just you can pull from the sides the whole time. I do that a lot on the last boo on the last boo on the last cackle because what happens is the boo has two different directions he can go. Everyone's like, no, he can only go left. Well he can go left, but he can go top left of the room or he can go bottom left of the room, and I'll show you what I mean. Mario. And the same thing happens in every room. Most ideas of rooms tend to be slightly different. Like, he can leave in between this area, or he'll leave, like, down in this area. Like, you've probably seen me in a couple of these areas already. If you, on the last cackle, if you pull him back and he goes straight into the same direction he was already going. So like if he's here and he goes straight towards the wall, you only gotta get like 12 or 13. If I pull him and twist him around, like you, like I said, I was just gonna try to do typically, if I need it, if I don't need it, it'd be all right. But if I feel like I need it and get a little extra something, cause sometimes I can save it, you can pull it around and change its direction. You get an extra three or four and I can get like, I've gotten up to 18 or 19 before cause he changed like an opposite direction. It was really crazy. But yeah, you just keep that in mind. But we're gonna see if we can get this boot to spawn low. Okay, that's a low spawn. You at least saw what it looked like. So that that would have spawned high. You see, I was in between the two barrels. Let me get in the hand cam, please. That's in between the two barrels too. You see how he's high? Now he could attack you still, obviously. It's not guaranteed. And maybe as you're getting comfortable with it. You'll just go with the attack right away. Because again, if you go... I most of the time now just go straight for him if I know he's going to do that. Because I don't want to miss the opportunity of him just leaving. That's always fun, right? He just leaves right out. Leaves right out the door. But it's the same idea like in the beginning, you probably noticed that I pulled the boo back like... Specifically the first pump that you can do, or the first initial movement of a boo that you can do... 
when the boo initially spawns is the largest one you can do in the entire cycle of the boo. So you want to take advantage of that when you can. So you always want to try to pull them back. Same idea as what you're doing there. You want to pull back what you're getting, opposite direction type thing, get a pull. Maybe I turn around a little bit. And when you work when you work around with it, you'll get the feel of it. I may it may not make as much sense, but if you kind of think of the ideas and work with it a little bit, you'll get the idea eventually. It took me like this strat idea that I kind of came up with the idea in a way was originally I was just going to learn the 11 HP in Michael Strat because I wasn't comfortable with the Bluehead's method of pulling it back at the beginning, and then I accidentally because the blue the um, 11 hit str 11 HP Strat. Originally, you would pull the boo back and then let him go, and then pull him back and then let him go, and then pull him back and then let him go. I accidentally had a couple moments where, like, I accidentally kept pulling him back and I said it was still working. So then, after about two or three tries, I realized it was working all the time, and that's where this came from. Both of those were in the top barrel, by the way. So again, I don't have to know. It's not a guess what this boo is what I'm saying. A nice save even though I double cackled in the middle of that. But I think I'm not the only one that said this. Like, a lot of people like the boo better on the left side. If he's going to be in the middle and you have to go for it, because, I mean... As I've described before, it's because of the way he spawns more right because of that. I don't know if people know why that is, but that's what it is. That's a pretty obvious one. You can see him on the bottom because he was at the furthest right one you could see. So you could see it like coming directly at the bottom. Cackle, cackle, cackle. I think I went a little bit off on that other one, but it's okay. If you know how to manage double cackles, you can like pull them way back into the room, which is a strategy that I use if you maximize your mistakes. Because this is another thing that will happen to people is they'll not be able to get like as much as like MB or someone else doing this strat, because I've done this in practice like for a lot of hours for a while so you just um, what are we going at we're trying to pull them you're trying to pull them back into the room let me just go over here all right get back in the game Alright, you can't do three. But yeah, manage management of double cackles is what I was speaking of. I think I forgot what I was saying and then I was going to think of something else. So your management of double cackles, if you don't manage it the whole way, if you manage it correctly, you can take like 15 off at the end of that. So like after he stops double cackling, you can get like 15, then you can kind of like, like carry it, or at least get like 16 or 17. Sometimes if you see a double cackle happening, you can like use a big force on the controller stick and the C stick and just force them way back. Like occasionally, maybe you'll see me in a run for some reason, or at least in practice, pull them like way back into the room, like about here on a double cackle when I see it coming. Or like in this, somewhere in this area. And it'll get like that extra life off so that I minimize that damage. Same like methods apply to that.
That was a good example of me doing side to side there. As opposed to just straight back, I kind of stayed in a side to side formation. See anything else I want to explain? So we covered like you know, pulling the boo bag opposite ghost, opposite of the way the ghost is facing. There's like a drag around method you can use side to side also. The drag around side to side method also helps if the boo is low. Sometimes that happens, most of the time he's high if you're going into the middle, which is most of the time when this happens. And then if he's the only time he's low is when he attacks you, and when he attacks you, he generally gets higher and higher and higher by the time he gets here, and you're fine. And generally, with this strat, you want him to be higher in the air because you'll get like this up, down, up, down type thing going on that you want to see. It's an up and down type rhythm. See how the boo's like going up, down, up. That was a good example of the double cackle thing I was talking about. I almost got that with the double cackle from 170 dang. But yeah, that's the idea of what I'm saying. Like when you when I change directions on the boo at the end to try to get it to work. I think I actually changed it the wrong way there, but that's kind of what I'm saying. when you can use it like and when you get used to both methods you can whip it around at the end I'm kind of just talking and explaining kind of a different way of doing a tutorial I guess but you know hopefully it like all of it like comes together and maybe some things like lighten up like that was what I needed to do to figure out what this did and what he said there hopefully something helps you Wouldn't surprise me if people that do blue hit strat also learn from this too, because it's kind of the same idea, just smaller pumps. I'm not comfortable with doing that, so I can't really teach that, but I can teach this, so there is a somewhat teach method that maybe can help people. But I appreciate everyone for watching. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. I don't think there's anything else I need to, wanted to explain. I think I got everything I wanted there. Yeah. Yeah, let them call for Mario, and we will see you next time. I'm Zircon Eagle 16. Everyone, have a good one.